Hello and welcome. In this video you will learn how to utilize all the new features that JavaScript ES7 and ES8 have to offer. We are going to mention pad start and pad end, object values and entries, async functions, trailing commas and much more, so stay tuned and let's dive right in. Since I just started creating videos for this YouTube channel and I'm trying to provide as much quality content as I can, it would mean a lot that you subscribe if you like this video, since I will post more videos and tutorials much more often. Now let's start coding. First, we are going to tackle uh, string that prototype, pad start and pad end, new ES7 feature. Uh, the pad start method uh, pads the current string with another string multiple times if needed, until the resulting string reaches the given length. The padding is applied from the start. And everything is same for the pad end, but the padding is applied from the end, or from the right, of the current string. So, uh, this is what pad, pad start and pad add end take as parameters. So, we type pad start or pad end, and then the desired length, of the string and text to add. So let's start writing. So if we have a string, so we can write it in a constant. Const string will be equal to something. And then we can start padding that string out. So if we write um, string that pad start, and then first we need to specify the desired length of the string. So let's say 10 characters. So we specify that our string needs to have 10 characters. And then we specify which characters do we want to add. So that can be another string. So let's start with high. And we will console.log that. Okay, if we run this, we get high, 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 high 10 times. Or you can write anything here. Let's type JavaScript mastery and we'll see what happens. This has four, nine, this has more than 10 letters. So we'll see what will happen now. As you can see, uh, the characters are being removed from our string and it is only left out with 10 characters. Okay, now we can try with something shorter like hi again and we can uh, try the pad end on the same function. But I doubt that we will see any difference because it is adding the same stuff all over again. Uh, so what's the use of this? What's the use of pad start and pad end? Uh, one usage of pad start could include prepending an area code to phone number if the user input isn't the correct length. So that's one real world example. And pad end could be used, for example, for decimal precision, if you want to add some decimal points. If we type one, two, three, four, five here, and instead of high, we type a dot here, what do you think will happen? If we run the function, we can see that we get five numbers and we get five dots. That's useful if you need your string to be a certain length. And as you can see, pad start, uh, pad start applies dots uh, or applies certain characters you want to pad with from the start or from the left, and pad end applies them from the end. Uh, again, it's really useful if you want your strings to be unified, if you want them to be the same, same length. Okay, now we can move to something, uh, in my opinion, much more interesting which is object.values. Object.values method provides, uh, provides us with uh, an, an array of objects properties. So if we run object.values and we need an object to run it on. So let's, let's create an object called object with let's say name that is equal to string John and uh, an age of let's say 20. Now if we type object here, so object that values object and if we console.log object that values from an object, 
we'll see what we'll get. Okay, I will just remove this console logs so we can start focusing on this. And as you can see, we get an array of all uh, the values from that object. You can see John and 20, and we get we get them sorted sorted out nicely in an array. So that's really useful if you want to if you do if you work with objects a lot. And you can add, for example, favorite books that is equal to an array, and let's say Harry Potter one and Harry Potter 2, for example, and we run it again, and we get John, first value, so as you can see, it can be uh, multiple different data types, it can be a string, it can be a number, or it can be an array, so array of favorite books, and here we get only values, so really, really useful. A really similar feature to object.values is object.entries. Object.entries method returns an array of objects, key, and value pairs. So object.values returns values from a certain object. But if you need both keys and values, so both name and John, you're going to need to use object.entries. So using the same object we just created, we are going to uh, call object.entries on the same object called object and we are going to place it into the console and after we run it as you can see here here are the values and this is the console log from object.values and if we run it again as you can see now we get an array as we did here but that array now contains arrays of key value pairs. So name, John, age 20, and favorite books that is equal to yet another array. So a really useful feature uh, for further on, especially working with that databases and uh, handling objects. Now to async functions. Asynchronous functions are functions which operate asynchronously, but keep the syntax and structure similar to standard synchronous functions. Since async functions are the biggest and the greatest new feature of ES8, I created a separate video explaining just async functions in depth on a real-world example. I will link to that video in the description and on the screen so you can check it out. So for this video, we are not going to go briefly through async functions because I really think that they do deserve a separate video and they are the feature of ES8 that will be used the most throughout the future of JavaScript. So I will just leave, leave a link to a video explaining async functions in depth. Now we can move to exponentiation. Here we can see that uh, JavaScript has provided us with a new uh, way of dealing with power powers of different numbers. So before we use math.pow and then base value of the expression is the first parameter, let's say 2, and then uh, the exponent of the number. So 2 to the power of 3, uh, we can console.log out the console and we can run it. As you can see we get 8 because 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Now JavaScript uh, ES8 has provided us with an even simple way of writing this out. You can just type uh, 2 and then uh, double asterisk and then the number you want uh, the power of to be. So 2 to the power of 3 following this example we are going to run it again and we are going to get 8 again. So as you can see since we can do Two, uh, 2 minus 3 or 2 plus 3 like this. Why uh, wouldn't, we, wouldn't we be able to do exponentiation just like this? Simple and easy. This is all that exponentiation is. It's a new syntax for, for writing uh, powers or exponents of a number. We can remove console.logs. 
and we can move on to trailing commas. So trailing commas are not a new feature, rather they're a fix for, uh, for something that we can write wrong. They are the ability of a compiler not to raise a syntax error when we add unnecessary comma in the end of the list. For example, if we have an object, uh, so we have an object here, so I'll just name it another object, and we have first will be equal to one, second to two, let's say, for example. Now, and let's do a third, so it becomes more more understanding, understandable. So, we have a comma here, comma here, and a comma here. We have these two commas because we need to add a next value, so it is necessary. But this comma, this comma isn't necessary because the, there is no fourth value. So, if we run this, if we console.log this object, and we run it, we can see we get all the three values. But if we add a comma here, we do not get a syntax error. That is because of trailing commas. They allow us to write a different code. This is uh, just a different way of writing this out. But it's really useful in this example. So it can be also on arrays. If we show an array and we type one, two, three, and we console.log that array, we can see we get one, two, three. But if we add a trailing comma here, which sure isn't necessary because there is no fourth value, it just prints the same things out. It doesn't show an error, which is really good. But if you type another comma here, you can see that there might be something here. So if you write it again, you see we get empty item. So it just adds one to the length. So now, if we try to run array that length on this array, we should get Three, because there are only three values. But now, if we add trailing comma here and try to run array that length on that, we get four. As you can see, this can be useful if you need to extract some values from an array. Maybe if you don't need the values in the middle, but only, for example, first few values and last few values, and you don't need those in the middle, we can just add as much trailing commas in an array as we need. So as you can see here, there should be one item in the middle. Length should, should still be three. So first, second, and the third. But now if we try to extract the second value, so this is the zero and this is one, if we try to extract one, we get undefined because there is no value here. And we, if we try to extract the last value, we get three. So as you can see, you can really work out with these trailing commas and try to get as much of them uh, as you'd like. It also allows us allows compiler not to throw syntax error here and here and in much other examples. So that is really nice addition to the JavaScript language and JavaScript syntax. Uh, this is basically all that it is to ES7 and DS8. As I said, uh, as I said. Uh, not much has been provided here. Uh, it is only to make uh, lives of developers easier. Uh, nice addition are object at values and object at entries. Trailing commas are nice because we will not get as much syntax error now and we can do something like this. So extract values from beginning and end of an array. Exponentiation is really good because it just provides a simpler syntax for, for creating uh, powers of a number. But the best thing of ES8 are async functions. As I said, I didn't do them in this video. But because of that, I created a whole video based just on asynchronous functions because they really do deserve their own video. They are the only thing that is going to be used in future JavaScript more and more every day because we can they basically replace promises and allow us to write asynchronous JavaScript code uh, in a synchronous way. So it looks really easy, it looks much better than promises, there, there isn't callback hell and stuff like that, so it's really good. I really advise you to check out that video.
Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe and see you in the next video.